Hello, and welcome to the Coach Me to Lead Show. Today, I'm talking to Tyler Selhorn, as you already can see in the picture. And um, welcome, Tyler. I don't know. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here learning out loud with you and your audience. Um, I, I love even just the way that you're like branding yourself, right? Of saying, hey, co coach me, right? Right. This, this uh, kind of like invitational way of like, you know, saying, uh, answering yes to the RSVP, right? To say, yes, I will take your invitation. Uh, yeah, please coach me. I, I love that version of the way that you're expressing yourself. And this is exactly um, why I have podcasts. I have a couple of, and um, I, I, I really want to learn from the people that I talk to. I love investing and sharing these ideas with other people. That's why I think podcasts are just a great tool. And um, learning, because I first think it's good to start here with you, is learning is, a, is an in integral part of what you do. Um, You've been a teacher for a long time. So what did you teach and why did you change? Yeah, so uh, a previous career, I was a technology-oriented teacher teaching secondary mathematics um, for 13 years. And you know, I, I was finishing an education leadership master's, you know, thinking I wanted to be an assistant principal or a technology coordinator in the district. And their timeline for that next thing for me wasn't my timeline. So I stopped asking them for permission to do the next thing. And I became a teaching-oriented technologist. I got a job in B2B uh, customer success um, in, in a SaaS business um, that was enabling remote working. Uh, I started podcasting in that kind of like market. Um, so you know, the remote show dot link if you want to listen in uh, along with us. But yeah, th that kind of path, right? It turns out that teaching twelve-year-olds algebra isn't so different from teaching adults how to use their software well, right? And really orienting yourself towards the outcome, right? Instead of the the timings and the the when it happened, it's more so that like, did we do the thing, right? Because in customer success, the the orientation is towards retaining the customer, right? To say, did we deliver the value that they the customer was seeking? Did we even ask to find out what it is that they were seeking from us? Because sometimes it's it's not exactly that the center of the bullseye ideal uh, client profile, right? It might be that they have something adjacent and we can learn that, ooh, there might be a whole nother market that we can sell into. And these are, you know, kind of like the, the processes and procedures of like listening closely to the learner and centering the understanding of the learner primarily, right? We want to deliver the outcome that the customer is seeking. Okay, well, my customers, when I was teaching school were students, right? They wanted to, earn, some of them, they just wanted to earn the grade. Others of them were, were motivated by just learning something new. Uh, others of them were saying, okay, well, I want to be prepared for a career or I want to connect with a, a you know, a, a, an interested adult that, that like cares about me. Um, you know, some students like weren't interested at all. And like, what was their outcome that they were seeking? Well, we can, we can adapt and, and, and make room for all of those students, but what was my job in the end? I needed to deliver students that were ready to be able to learn the next thing in mathematics or to be able to graduate in some cases where they were returning to get to recover a credit that they hadn't gotten before. Okay. Well let's, let's optimize your path right for that outcome and that might not be the same path as every other customer in the classroom and so you know like i say it's, it's not so different so teaching has a lot to do with ans asking questions mm -hmm. well I, I think it's really just starting with that what is it that you're hoping to accomplish right and then solving from that point backwards right and so um one of the things that I think is really, really interesting about this moment in time here in 2023 is that we can start building much more optimized for individuals, one size fits one solutions, right? Instead of these always one size fits all and, and just optimize for the largest possible average person. I think that's, that's a mistake uh, in, in this moment, right? We want to be able to uh, set up software environments that are tuned exactly to ourselves, right? Um, why are we even speaking together today? I don't know. Uh, it's because I have scaled myself as an internet person on the internet doing internet things, right? Um, as recently as 2019, I was teaching, you know, middle school students uh, algebra, 
okay, well, how do I become this person? Well, I, I, I start building processes and, and, and flywheels that, that start spinning up opportunities for me to meet new people and to be introduced and to, for us to have an opportunity to talk to each other. It's really, really turns out that computers can do stuff. <laughs> and uh, we keep relearning that lesson that 1995 taught us that uh, we can interact with across you know, time, distance, um, you know, now, you know, there's all this like, uh, you know, recent kind of, uh, activity and interest in the quote unquote metaverse. Well, I think that, you know, uh, DARPAnet, uh, was, was the first instance of, of the metaverse, right? It's saying, okay, uh, I'm no longer tethered to my physical location to be able to connect to people, you know, telephony in general, right? You know, enabled all kinds of international business that was not possible before. Okay. Well, here we are. Uh, what you going to do? Are you going to keep doing it the way you know people did it in 1937? Um, you know, I hope not, because lots of technologies have enabled a whole new way of working uh, since that time. How do you see then? Um, because I've, I was really, I, I looked for uh, you know the topic of this conversation, and I was. Um, Touched is not maybe the right word, but I I I, I connected with the uh, move from command and control to collaborate and connect, and for me that that related to leadership. But what does this mean to you? How do you see this? Well, I think it's really important for us to begin with a shared reality that no one is in charge of anyone else. Everyone is in charge of themselves. It's, it's a mistake to think that you can make anyone do something, right? You know, okay, let, let's, let's use the school uh, room as the analogy, right? Uh, there might be some sort of like legal ramifications uh, for a student not showing up to school, but even when they do show up, they don't have to engage. They don't have to pay attention. They don't have to do the work. And it's on us as leaders to be invitational and to give, recognize the agency of individuals, right? And that they are autonomous, and that they are seeking opportunities to master a skill, right? That they're looking for us to like cast a vision to, to like find purpose. And it's really for them, right? Like what kind of vision are we you know, casting? Is it one that's interesting? Is it one that's, that's invitational or is it one that's expressing power over others? Right. Cause I think the, the transition that needs to happen uh, more and more is for us to recognize that the candle that I have lit in my hand, when I light someone else's candle, it doesn't make my candle go out. Right. Now we have twice as much light as we had before. And we can then go each of us to light the candle of another. Right? We need to stop expressing power over others and instead express power to, power with, and power within others. Because when we do that, we give power an opportunity to grow and expand. And when we express power over others, it very often shrinks or, or doesn't have the opportunity to become more than it is. And it's a mistake when we do this version instead of this version, right? It's so important for us to center the understanding and the agency of others, because when we do, we give them the opportunity to RSVP yes or no. In, in, in the business context, let's let's go there, right? Um, obviously, if somebody RSVPs no to the invitation enough times, we might need to invite them to find a different role at a maybe another organization, right? But when we say, hey, would you, have you considered, um, have you thought about, can we try? right? These kinds of phrases, I wonder, right? I'm curious, right? Those kinds of phrases center the power of the other, right? For them to be able to, you know, uh, achieve, um, you know, change, achieve purpose and affect change, right? Okay. Well, now they've taken a step further up and further into the organization. And, you know, we have to recognize that no role, no company, is forever, right? We need to understand that like this engagement with this other person, right, is, is for a particular set of time, right? And 
we, we want to see them grow inside and outside of the role that they're in. We want to see them grow inside and outside of the, the company, right? We'd like to see them, you know, graduate as, as company alumni, hmm. right? That claim where they had worked before and, and will refer, uh, you know, good people that they meet to you or would follow you to another company because they enjoyed that experience of working, you know, you know for that manager. I mean, those are things that we undervalued, right, in the past. And I think is coming to the forefront, especially, you know, as we are less and less tied to geography, right, and less and less tied to uh, physical co-location. Um, you know, people are recognizing just how autonomous each, each of us are hmm. and, and just how autonomous each, each person that we work with is. To me, this sounds because if, if I look at like the great corporations um, in the Anglo American world, so US and United Kingdom, for example, here in Europe, um, I see still this command and control kind of environment. What, and you talk about, for example, the um, autonomy that we have as an individual because of the um, independence of location, for example. But what do you think triggered? is triggering or trigger this move towards more the um, picture that you are painting? I think it's a recognition that um, by individuals. Okay. So, um, you know, previous career, right. You know, secondary mathematics teacher, I was a unionized government employee. Hmm. Right. And I think there is something to be said for, when, okay, so we're, we're just to timestamp our conversation, right? Uh, it's nearly Labor Day here in the United States. And that is in honor of the labor movement uh, broadly. But to say that like weekends and 40 hour work weeks, right? Those are things that do not happen because of the power those that be holding on to. No, no, no. Weekends happen because of the labor movement. 40 hour work weeks happened because of the labor movement. Now it, it had to be done in, in partnership with, with capital. Right. But I think it's really important that we recognize that it's individual choices that people are making that are transforming economies to, I mean, um, you know, it, it's, I, I'm from Michigan uh, originally. And so, uh, I'm not this, I'm, I'm bringing up Henry Ford, not necessarily as like a, like a, a, a happy, like, like, Oh, look at his example type of person. Like, but he has some good things to say too. Um, and one of the things that he recognized is that number one, if he wanted to be a successful business person, he needed to be able to give people leisure time to be able to take trips, to take road trips, right? The automobile road trip happened because Henry Ford recognized that assembly line workers need to be able to afford a car and have time to drive it. Right. And so like those kinds of adjustments and like visions of the future, right. Are, are those are the businesses that, that become enduring and become uh, transformational in, in the environment. So, you know, okay. Uh, we, we, I, I'm, I'm a, you know, a podcaster in the remote space, but like that, that's not what this is about. This is like recognizing that, okay, the economy has transformed and those that recognize the second, third, fourth order effects of that transformation soonest will be the ones that, that benefit the most, right? So, you know, okay, we're, we're not going to ride horses or buggies anymore. We're going to drive cars. Okay. Well, um, there, this is a similar, uh, no more of the, you know, that, that another Henry Ford quote, right? Is to say, if, if my customer, you know, customers would have asked for a faster horse, right? right. Okay. Well, what, what is the automobile, right? Instead of fast horses in 2023? Well, I think it's going to be one of those things where to say, okay, I want to provide um, location independence um, to, to our work or, or just that, that's even a better way to work in the first place, right? Is to say that like, okay, we're going to have a shared reality that exists in a digital space instead of a physical space, hmm. right? 
Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Why weren't we doing that in the first place? Aha. Those are the moments that are going to be unlocks for, for everybody to say, okay, I mean, you know, I don't know. You, you've got a, like a really cool whiteboard back there. Like, you know, you've got lots of ideas and, and ways that you express yourself, but when you want a, a collaborator that doesn't work in your office to see that, what do you do? You take a picture, right? And you send it to them on teams or Slack or whatever chat channel or email, right? And I think it's really important for us to start saying, okay, well, what if we default to, uh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to the, to the machines read your, uh, 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 you know, grease, grease pen marker board. Right. And, and translate that into a digital, you know, whiteboard space, say like, a, like a confluence whiteboard or a mural or a Miro, right. It just, just like automatically gives you something that you can, you can do your regular version and then turn it into a digital one. That's easy to, to, to operate with. Right. Or maybe it's that we you know, start having conference rooms uh, that have whiteboards that, that work natively with those applications. Like there's, there's an opportunity there that, that didn't exist before. Uh, because not enough people recognize that we aren't always going to be in the same, we're not going to be shoulder to shoulder to each other. Right. And I think that um, how do we undo, unlearn some of the things that were successful in the past to then transform our opportunity to embrace new ways of working. Right. And to embrace, um, you know, I, I like to, so, you know, we're talking about, you know, uh, location independence, uh, the, the, the quote unquote digital nomads, right? I like mm. to call them the astronauts of, of remote working or, or, or flexible working, right? And what happened when uh, we, we, the Americans shot those guys up into the, to the moon? Well, we got to the moon, right? That was cool, right? But there's a whole bunch of like, like attendant like technologies that came back to earth, right? Things like a microwave, right? What are the microwaves of the digital nomad experience? Right. I, th I think it's, you know, starting from a document, starting from uh, an assumption that we are going to like, we have enough time zone overlap that we can have this live conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but there's going to be people that are asleep right now. It turns out that the sun only shines on half the world at a time. And what if you want to travel to Asia? Right. What if you want to travel to, um, you know, Latin America and you're, you're somebody that, that is, you know, had been working in the Middle East. Well, th those, those are on the opposite sides of the world. Okay. Um, what if I sent communication to you, assuming that you won't be able to reply immediately and for us to have this shared understanding? Okay. Well, those are some like human behavioral level things that need to get baked into the way we even use things. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had the opportunity to work a lot with, um, Team, so I used to lead a customer experience team that sp spanned from Seattle to Melbourne. Hmm. We never had 100% of our team on a video conference at once. That's not physically possible. So how did we fill in those gaps? Well, we rotated when we had a meeting, right? To, to center each of the time zone groups that we had leadership in, Right. Each of those uh, team leaders would, would host the, the team uh, meetup that week, but we recorded and then we would tag and ask in the thread. There's, there's ways to do this that don't require us to like wake up in the middle of the night. Yeah. I, th I think that is something that we need to learn from you know, the, those, those people that have done it before us, right? And that's me, right? How, do, how did I come up with, okay, moving from command and control to collaborate and connect? That's the distillation of, you know, organizations like GitLab, right? Who have, you know, demonstrated how to do that well uh, from Matt Mullenweg and the, the folks at Automatic, right? They, the, all of these kind of open source materials that are really there. Okay. I'm surrounded by a bunch of nautical tchotchkes, right? Because I grew up sailing. I'm, I'm wearing the, my, my nautical uh, signal flag uh, shirt for the appearance today. I, though that analogy right? Occurred to me as I started recognizing, oh, well, like some of the very first like true remote workers were naval captains, right? You have to have your orders, mm. your commission written down and stuffed in your shirt, right? And, and you know, like it's the, the authority and responsibility both attended to that, that, that leadership, right? And to say, okay, we're going to go off 
and we're going to accomplish this you know, clear scope of mission, right? We're not going to do other things. We're going to do these things. And you know, there's going to be all this kind of like um, learning and understanding that happened for me when I started saying, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's like. That's what this is like. And obviously I'm doing, you know, you're not, you don't have to wait months for a, a letter to go back to, to the, the, the rear admiral uh, in, in uh, Europe. Right. And, and then, you know, for a, a message to come back, I mean, obviously we, we were, it's a little bit tighter uh, <laughs> uh, turnaround on those communication loops, but you can start from that extreme example and then map back to, okay, what's it going to be like for me today? Right. Right. So, so I'm, I'm going to come back to that, but I want to first also look to the other part you just said before that you creating um, humans or employees uh, become better and and you know f um, are, are becoming better to find a job elsewhere. Or even if you go if you go away as a leader and you take people along, or when they go away, they still promote your business. Um, so because when you talk about the future, you you mentioned all these technology ideas, but what do you think about like what could we do to create better humans? Well, I, I think it starts with I mean, we were talking just ahead of um, the our conversation here live about some of the contrasting kind of like ways of working, uh, you know, here in North America versus, you know, Europe where like there's a longer history and more recent history of apprenticeship, right. And trusting individuals and, and taking the perspective of that, this person that's alongside me, that's junior, right. Uh, I, they are in charge of themselves, right. But it's partly my responsibility to, to ensure that they become, a craftsman in, in the similar sort of, uh, school, right. Or, or way a uh, mode, right. As, as me, right. So like there might be, a, a you know, a, a German or a, a Dutch kind of like, like relationship inside of, you know, a, a team that says, okay, um, we, we have this way of working and, you know, new people, kind of have this ongoing relationship with, you know, older team members. And I think that is a, a model that's worthy, right? Because there is no substitute for connection, hmm. right? Um, there is no substitute for, I mean, these monkey brains have got a primate, right? And, saying that we're going to primarily work together asynchronously is not enough. Mm. There's a trade-off there. There's a trade-off there. And we have to recognize that there are negative aspects to any decision that we make. There's always going to be trade-offs. There's never, uh, uh, you know, sunshine and rainbows unless there is rain, right? So it's really important for us to recognize that there is something to be mitigated with any set of decisions that we make. Right. And it turns out that we had over optimized for office working hmm. and, and being able to put our eyeballs on that human working. Hmm. And I think that that's one of the things that is maybe that's most laudable in that apprenticeship relationship, right. Is to say that I have my workspace and you have your workspace and the, and, and the mentor the, 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 and the mentee, right. They, they aren't necessarily always working shoulder to shoulder. Okay, but I'm going to, on a regular cadence, be in your workspace, right? And then on a regular cadence, you're going to come and just watch me work. You're, you're going you're gonna to come along, you know, you know in, in the sidecar of my motorcycle of work, right? And you're just going to ride along. Right. I think that kind of version of things has not been well developed yet in the a distributed work world. I think it's really important that we recognize that that has been missing so far um, on, on the whole. And we need to, but even in office working, right? Which, you know, organizations had a really great, you know, intentional mentorship program. Well, guess what happened? Uh, people got better real fast in those organizations, 
right? Whereas the ones that are like saying, oh, uh, uh, maybe you'll get a person if you like seek that out for yourself. Guess what happened in those organizations? Almost yeah. none of that kind of relationship happened. Yeah. If in this, um, the, the picture that you're painting here, um, what do you feel about the companies that are now in the last you know, year or so calling back people to the office? Um, it, because of course it has, like you just said, it is important that we have make the connection that we can look into somebody, what they are doing, we can learn from them as an apprentice. How do you see that in a context? It's got to be both and. Hmm. We, we, we have to reject false dichotomies, either or thinking need to go away and never come back, right? It's really, really important that we recognize, just like we said, there are trade-offs to every decision that we make. Okay, well, if, if we are going to primarily be distributed, okay, we need to have a cadence and procedure and process and policy around coming together, right? Um, shout out to Annie Dean and the Atlassian's team anywhere. They call this intentional togetherness. Hmm. They still have the, the same real estate footprint. They, they opened a, a, a new office in Austin. They're planning a new, another office in Sydney. They're not shutting down the office, but they are reworking all of those and by golly, the, the Sydney office is going to look a lot different today uh, you know, you know, with, with the influence of today's version versus what maybe when they started that project, right? And I think it's really important for us to say to ourselves, okay, flexibility, not fights, right? Spectrums of work, not squabbling, right? Considered intentional decision-making is the way forward, hmm. right? And, and mandates, right? And, and holding on to the old way or like, let's go, can we get back to normal? No, 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 no. Right, right now is normal. Right now is normal. And all of these people that are in our team are normal. There's no like uh, uh, maintaining a specific version of things as normal. What's, what needs to become normalized is a growth mindset and right. an opportunity to iterate, right? You know, you know, We've talked already in this conversation about me being a mathematics teacher. One of the things that I always said to students, and then I also say now uh, to, to people that I interact with, is that compounding is real. One raised to the 365th power is one. 1.01 1 .01 raised to the 365th power is 37.7 plus. Hmm. Hmm. Don't do everything at once. Don't bite off more than you can chew, but stop rejecting the new thing. Stop, start experimenting, start trying, start you know, thinking and wondering and, and setting intention towards a better future. And by golly, that, that, that's, that's the difference. The difference is caring. The difference is interest. The difference is engagement. Because as soon as you start becoming apathetic and like expressing that apathy with mandates and 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 forceful you know control stuff, right? Well, that 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 it, that doesn't work. It doesn't work, especially faced with competitors that are willing to collaborate and connect instead. Hmm. Yeah, to me, it sounds like again this question part. Um, that we started off in the beginning with as a teacher, just ask these questions to this to the students, the pupils, but also now asking your employees, the people that want to work with you, um, how do you want to work? Right? How mm -hmm. how do you feel is uh, you can learn and and bec and become better and improve? How could you uh, do things and how could we make this work together in a way that you work remote, but we also see you and not because we need to see you, but because we think it's important to make the connection, for example, like I think that's again is the same thing is just asking these questions and being interested as a leader in your team. I think that's really important. Yeah. My spouse is a therapist, hmm. right? And I've learned a lot from them. Right. I'll just be very plain. And um, one of my favorite, um, a, a giant of 20th century psychology is a man by the name of Carl Rogers. 
<laughs> and Rogerian theory is that um, the most important thing that a helper can provide someone who is being helped is something that's called unconditional positive regard. Now, obviously, like in business, this is not a therapist relationship, right? But I think that imagining yourself as a helper, right? As a coach, right? These are ways in to like understanding how to help someone become more than they are already, right? Is to continually hold open the space for them to choose better, to choose a, a, a new way, a better version of themselves. And, you know, as we said, like sometimes, you know, if they are, so we know to enough of those invitations, we need to invite them to find another opportunity that they are engaged with. Um, but even that mode is, is so like that stance, that uh, approach, like is less attached to that person's response. Hmm. Right. And very often that, that detachment and that um, non-judgmental tone right? Is the thing that gives them the opportunity to say yes. Because as soon as you start like telling and forcing and mandating, well, that's, that's when, um, you know, I, I, I like to use the meta. Okay. So I, we don't want to anthropomorphize dogs, right? But this is a very good metaphor. Um, well-trained dogs obey their master automatically right whereas if you put a, a a dog on a leash it's gonna pull on that chain hmm. right so are you going to be willing to put in the work to help people become the kind of you know uh employee or 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 contractor or collaborator right that that says yes and, and, you know, falls in line and does the things that they're asked to do, or are you going to have this adversarial, uh, uh, us versus them version of things? I don't think anybody wants that, but I think very often defaults matter. The way you approach somebody, the way you, um, like go about it. Yes. Collaborate and connect instead of command and control. That's that version of thing is, is bankrupt. It, it, it is make deposits, right? And very often when, when you express that sort of like invitation, you, you'll find out that the, the, the bank account is full, right? When you have to make that withdrawal, when you do have to make a, a it's got to be like this this time, y'all. It's got to be like this. I think that's a, a prime example of like what it would be like in a, in a classroom. You've been in that classroom with the teacher that shows up just, just with a mean face and a pointed finger the whole time. Versus uh, the the teacher that's got an arm around your shoulder. Which one do you want? Which classroom do you want to be in? Which kind of company do you want to work in? Yeah. Okay, to um, give you the opportunity to round this up with um, on, on you know, recapture maybe. Um, yeah. so how do you see? How do you see leadership? How do you treat leadership as in your in your work? Well, I think uh, to me, the, the, the kind of summary phrase is invitational leadership, right? So instead of expressing a, a you must, um, I express a have you tried, hmm. right? And maybe they did try. Okay, well, um, maintaining a level of curiosity instead of judgment, right? Well, Tell me more about that. How'd that go? And that way we can center the others, the other person's like, like center their autonomy, center the fact that they are in charge of themselves, not you. Right. And, you know, as soon as we start shouting, right. As soon as we start, uh, uh, um, getting pointed, I mean, these are not like mistakes. I, I, these are mistakes I've made as a teacher, as a leader, right. As a parent, as a coach. Right. Um, I think that's the other thing that I want to invite people into, like from a leadership perspective, right. Is to think of the full stack of their identities, right? Mm -hmm. Like who am I, right? I, I am a spouse. I am a parent. I am a youth sports coach. I'm a friend, I'm a faith community member, 
I'm a software nerd, right? I'm a remote working advocate. Like these are all things that have valence for who I am as a professional, right? And very often my success as a professional is rooted in lessons that I've learned and experiences that I carry with me from those other identities. And I think that's one of the things that I'm most excited about this version of, of work, right? Is that, you know, now because we're less tied to specific geographies, uh, we, we, can, we can reorient our stack uh, based upon the life that you want to lead. E even the people that want to put professional as further up the stack. Like for those people that want to make a professional as, as the primary thing, they're no longer tied to a specific location, right? So they can go and be in um, you know, Silicon Valley or in Berlin or London or Paris, right? For a specific set of time that, that is most important to them, right? And then they can rework that stack as soon as they start, you know, wanting to have a family or, or maybe like after they've had a family, they can, they can put that professional thing back up top. And, and there's, there's less of like, okay, um, like for me, why are we just to, to be clear, I, I'm in not tech hub USA. I am in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, previously North Americans call or native Americans called this place Kikianga, right? And this is the, the, uh, confluence of a bunch of rivers that, that cross over the continental divide here. So like people have been living here a long time before, uh, uh, you know, the United States decided to put a fort here. Right. Uh, but, but this place, right. Is not the center of innovation hmm. and technology, right. But that's where my family is. That's where we're raising our family, near family. And now I have the opportunity to connect to and work with anyone, yeah. right? I, I think that's a really different and fun and exciting version of the world that um, we've only just begun to like even recognize and, and notice. In that regard, how do you see, what is your next step? What do you see as your next step? Well, um, so two things. Uh, number one, I'm working primarily as a contractor and, and, and like doing things that are less tied to, to like specific times and places. Uh, but then secondarily, I'm looking for opportunities inside of the quote unquote flexible work or new ways of working uh, teams at, you know, global multinationals and like, like technology companies. Because um, this new version of things is something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about and, you know, speaking with the very best people that, that are in this space. Um, and so I'm looking for opportunities in, in those kinds of teams. So if you're looking for somebody that has a, a very clear perspective that, that, you know, can either be bounced off of or, or embraced, um, I, I'm, that's me. I, I'm looking forward to, you know, helping to coach the leaders in those teams and to build products internally and externally that solve those problems. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about th those types of things. Also, like if you're building a product in this space, right. Um, and you're looking for somebody that would um, be able to influence that with my experiences and my ideas, that that's, mm. that's what I'm interested in too. So if you are that person you're looking for, Tyler, you have here the QR code that you can just scan and you go directly to his uh, website, which, by the way, I also had previously in build, which is tcell with double L dot L -N -K. Um, I think very easy to remember, but if you don't are not fast enough, you can just scan this code from the video and you go directly to a um, overview website and you have um, opportunities to go to various websites and places where you can further investigate Tyler. Um, I've learned today a lot about you know, your vision of um, the way of leadership, but also for the future and in combination with your experience in teaching, um, not just um, in the classroom like before with these children, but also um, with like now with technology and um, people in the, in the jobs, um, but also anybody who wants to listen to you and learn from you. So um, great ideas on leadership in asking questions, um, invite, invite them to become a, like a participant and become like learning into the job. So I think that was wonderful. Uh, and I thank you for that, Tyler. Thank you, I don't know, for the opportunity to be learning out loud with you and your audience. And for you guys watching and or listening, um, this episode will be on the blog.coach.me by Monday. 
like every Monday. And the video version, the audio version, video will be on YouTube. The audio version will be on Spotify. And we will be next, uh, back by next Friday, um, same time. So 9 a.m. Central Time or 4 p.m. Central UMP time. Thank you very much for watching and see you later. Bye-bye, y'all.